Look at it. Oh. He's got pro athlete written oh, all over him. Yeah. Look at that stud. Look at this guy. You are right here. Right before my workout. What's so. up, Miles? How's it going? I'm John. Nice Orlando. to meet you, John. This yeah, is Adam. Adam. Nice to meet Adam. you. You met Adam. Giovanni. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, Just met you up there. Man. Thanks for doing this. You know, I was, I was. You know, he doesn't have to show us up with these models. I mean, shit. welcome yeah. to the gun show. Yeah. Holy you guys shit! Caught me right before my workout. This man. guy. <laughs> have you noticed there is a there is? I mean, Geo is in great shape. You've been a trainer forever, and no, and you know he's considerably older than all of us, Miles. <laughs> but uh, he, he feels better. You know, he feels. Better. I mean, I get it. Black don't crack, and I get, agree. You personify that. But there is a yeah, difference, even as in great a shape you. Are from you, which is insane. Your shape, and then there's like pro athletes. It's so crazy. They have it's like that next level of like, how is this possible? How is it so fucking chiseled? When I dreamed about being in the NFL, this is how this is right, 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 right. <laughs> well, see, the secret is easy, man. We just have to run all the time. Is that what it is? <laughs> I, you know, I'm not sitting sitting down. You know, we have to. We're always constantly working out, so it's really not fair. You yeah. Know, if you had time to do what we do, you know, you would you would do it. And yeah. You would look this. You know. I gotta tell you, I'm I'm a baseball guy. Sure. Um, and I'm a but I, any pro athlete. I mean, I'm a cowboy fan. I like football, but yeah. you know, not like this guy's diehard. Uh, <laughs> clearly, huh? Raiders, Raiders. Oh, Raiders. Um, okay. But. Uh, any pro athlete to me, it's like I fanboy out. I, I it's 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 it's. What I think we all dream of, most guys, when we're young, starting whatever sport we gravitate to, that's what we want. You know, I want to be a Dodger. I thought for sure I'd be a Dodger, and then I realized, A, you got to be really fucking good, and then B, uh, you got to work at it. Miles, I didn't do either of those two things, which relegated me to a very successful softball career. When I saw you playing uh, baseball, probably you were maybe... 12, 13 years yes, old? Yes, I was a stud. At off of Sepulveda in Little I, League. I, I remember this. Yeah. You were a stud. I peaked early, Miles. Yeah. I peaked early. And then high school got worse and worse. And yeah. So let me ask you this. Why yeah. Why baseball? Why was that your sport? I don't know. Because uh, it involved think, the least amount of running. The yeah, least yeah. amount of running. <laughs> yeah, probably, actually. Yeah. Um, <laughs> when I was little, uh, my dad took me to a Dodger game. Mm hmm. And that was all she and wrote. that was it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we met some of the players. So my dad is a singer. He was, but your parents would know uh, Tony Orlando. Oh, yeah, no but, doubt. Okay. Oh, yeah. uh, and so, you know, because of that, we had access to, like, the players. And mm -hmm. back in the 70s, my dad, my dad in, like, 73 till 77 was literally the equivalent of, like, being Justin Timberlake. That uh, that level of fame. So we got to do a lot of things that the average person just doesn't ever get to do. So we had a lot of access to like the Dodger players and stuff, and it just it just took for me. You know, it was just that was my sport. Yeah, yeah, I get it. I get it. What <laughs> made you gravitate towards football? Very similar. Yeah, uh, you know, I played. I started off in soccer. That didn't work out, and uh, my parents put me in Pop Warner. And then, uh, similar to you, I went to a Colts game. You know, I was uh, I was born in Indianapolis, and okay. uh, my family's from Indiana, and so I went to a Colts game, got to meet Peyton Manning, Coach Caldwell, uh -huh. and uh, you know I just got to see it. That was my first time seeing it. You know? Yeah, Vegas, you don't really get a lot of exposure to professional sure. teams. Yeah. You know, this is going to be that's why it's going to be huge that the Raiders are coming into town. Yeah. But you know, for me, I was just like, wow, I get to see these guys larger than life. Yeah, sure. And uh, ever since then, I was like, that would be. That would be awesome. Um, many years ago, Gio and I used to own a PR firm in LA, and we did a lot of work with Marshall Falk and uh, no kidding. and uh, Quentin Coria. I don't mm -hmm. know if you remember him. He was a linebacker for the Colts, number fifty-five oh, yeah. at one point, and then he played for the Cowboys. You know, the best team in football, the, the Cowboys. Team. Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> um, uh, and so, so you played for the Lions, but yep. right now you're a. F I just f found out. I didn't realize this. You were a free agent right now. So, yep, coming up March uh, March sixteenth, I think, is when it officially. Officially starts there. Yep. Got it. So is that nerve wracking right now? Like, like. Yeah, man, it feels you, like you kind of all over again because right. I don't know what to expect. This is my first go around. I finished my four years. To, yeah, and now I'm you kind of have to worry. You worry about like, will I get on a team or it's not? I'm not trying no. to put negative stuff in your head, but um, I'm not. I'm not worried about you know getting onto a team. It's just now that I have the freedom to go, you know, and do pursue anything. You know, now I'm going to have to. Just approach it like a business for the first time. You know? Right. Everything was just kind of spelled out to me before. You know, hey, leave leave college. We're drafting you. You're coming here. You right. know, you're locked into a four year contract. Right. And so every year, I'm just like, hopefully they keep me. 
Right. right. Whereas now it's, you know, now we're going to go, we're going to talk to the Lions, hopefully talk yep. to, you know, whatever teams and then make a business decision. And oh, so, so you could still play for the Lions. Sure. Yeah. I see. So that's, okay. that's the thing. So Got how it. it works is I'm still technically under Lions uh, uh, contract. Got it. And then do they March. kind of get first crack at you? That's how. Yeah, exactly. I see. So okay. I can't talk to other teams yet. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. So no pressure yet. Huh? Right. Yep. And so, so, so you, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go but you went to Foothill High School, correct? Correct. So how did you get from Indianapolis to Vegas? Was oh, that... so it's yeah, it's way more simple than I I'm leading on. When mm. I was born, one year old, we move out to Vegas. Okay. okay. So I was raised out here. I'm practically from Las Vegas. I just was born. Okay. You know, okay. In Indianapolis. Sure. My but sister, that was she's two years team. younger. She was born out born here. here. Okay. But yeah. because the folks were from there, right. That's just their team. Right. They grew and up. And Vegas didn't have a team. Exactly. Yet. I so, gotcha. You know. Yeah. Cheer for the okay. Colts. Yep. That was me. That was me. Super crazy. You know, I ended up meeting Caldwell in middle school or whatever that was. Uh, and then he was my coach when I got drafted. So that and was weird. you were a – originally, correct me if I screw this up. You were a linebacker in the beginning? or And then you converted so was, to special teams? So I was drafted as a safety. Oh, safety. Okay. I got moved to linebacker, back to safety briefly, and then back to – it's it's a uh, it's crazy, man. You That's know? not Patricia for you. It's <laughs> well. Here's what it is: you get different <laughs> systems, and you know that Patriot system is one of the systems where they like to move guys around. And that's all it was. It wasn't a knack and or a knock on what I could or couldn't do. It was just right. you know they just like to move guys around. And one thing that has been consistent is yeah, I've been pr producing on special teams. What is your if you could choose what what would it be i know don't give me the standard wherever well, whatever they well, want no. me uh, yeah i'm not gonna say right, that because right. that's not true okay. you know? <laughs> <laughs> i'm not gonna lie to you um, <laughs> but um if i could choose yeah probably a, a down in the box type safety or an outside linebacker those are almost the same position that's why it, the name doesn't really matter because it's almost the same position depending on what system you're in. Got it. And at yeah. Southern Utah, you were a safety then? Yeah, sure. Yeah, at Southern Utah, I was about 15 pounds heavier and I was a safety. Wow. Yeah, I can't. Oof. I can't wrap my head around it. <laughs> that only works in D1 AA. So I can tell fast. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Woo. man. Yeah. yeah, it was different. It was different in college, man. I you what could you get away now? with a lot. Right now, I'm probably about 220. Two, I, I range between yeah, 220 to 225. I'm super light. Super light for linebacker. I was just say, yeah, yeah. Super light for linebacker and just heavy for a safety, like pretty heavy for a safety. Right. Um, how and tall so that's are you? why I'm like in the middle, I can bounce. I'm about 6'2. I say about, I know exactly how tall yeah. I'm. Just over 6'2. Okay. Yeah. And But the media guy says 6'4. And what's. Oh, it, no, 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 no. Oh, that's just the way it works. Right, right, right. right. Yeah, <laughs> what, what was your combine 40 time? Dude, my con. I'm so embarrassed by my combine 40 time. My combine 40 time was like 4'6", but I, being from Southern Utah, I didn't know what the combine was. I didn't know that it was a whole week of staying up all night, eating pizza and candy, you know what I'm saying? Oh, going wow. to meetings. Oh, dude, what you see on TV, it's completely different. Really? You know, you're, you're going to meetings all day, all night. So by the time, it, and then you run at the end. Okay. You know, days later. Right. So I'm gassed. I'm not trying to make excuses. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. I mean, just earlier or just a few weeks later on my pro day, I ended up running a 4 4. Oh, and wow. on my junior day, I ran a 4 4 2. That's but that shit. combine, I was not, dude. I was tight. I was, I was stressed. Like, it's scary. You're in there, it's pitch quiet. Uh -huh. yeah. You know, you're just like looking around. It was. It kind of got to me a little bit, you know. I'm, yeah. I'm ashamed by that 40 time, but, you know, they got to go by the combine. And, but and that's, that's back home for you, Lucas Oil Field or Stadium, rather, you know, wasn't it? Yeah, theoretically, you know, back home. But, I mean, if it was in Vegas, I would have preferred that. <laughs> <laughs> what is it like stepping on to the field first time as an NFL player? Do you have, like, that holy shit, I did it moment? Like, inside, does it make you tear up, like, as you're walking on yeah. the, through the tunnel? Like, it yeah. has to, right? It has to. It's everything you would imagine and, right. and more. You right. know, you see you're standing, you're standing there, and even starting from the national anthem, you know, yeah. you're standing there with your heart, with your hand over your heart, and you're just like, dang, this is it, guys. Right. Like, and are you this nervous? This is real. Oh, what? Yeah. yeah you're crazy, right? The helmets, you, right. they're glistening like, you know, the throwing lights are hitting. Throwing up before the game. Oh, guys are throwing up, you know, veterans even throw up still sometimes before games. But it's it's surreal, you know, right. because you're like, wow, like, let me blink and just remember this because th I'm here. You right. know, like, this is it. This right. is the top of the top. People are cheering. Right. You, you I, I will say this, though. After that national anthem, you don't hear any more cheers. Really? Like, it's just like you just Tuned zone out. out because now, so I'm on special teams. So, my first NFL game, ironically, you know, it's in, in Indianapolis. 
I'm on kickoff, so I'm on the opening kickoff, and I'm like, dude, like, okay, this is like war. Like, I'm I get to hit running down there. <laughs> Man, I'll tell you a story. I'm running down there. It's a touchback. And so I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to enjoy it. I still have, like, the, the fireworks are still going off. Like, the smoke's coming down still. So I'm just running. I see it's a touchback. I'm like, okay, cool. I'm going to cruise. Yeah. All of a sudden, next thing I know, dude comes and cleans me up, man. And I'm, oh. I'm looking up. All I see is I just see the top, and I see my legs up. I'm like, what? What just happened? Oh I'm on my, my back. God. I'm like, what just happened? <laughs> and dude runs by me and says, welcome to the league, Rook. I was like, okay. Wow. Yeah. I was like, that's it. I was like, that's the... You know, that's how it's going to be. So I need to, uh, ever since then, have my head on a swivel. So now, <laughs> now I'm that guy. You know, now yeah. I know when the rookies are coming. But. I would think it's like it goes in stages, right? So there's like stage one is like, oh, my God, I did it. I'm here. Yeah. And then there's like, oh, my God, that's Tom Brady. Or, oh, my God, that, sure. right? Like yeah. you go through like the players. You probably, some of them you grew up watching, yep. admiring, whatever. And now you're on the field talking to these people, competing against these people. It's yep. just got to be incredible feeling. That feeling of, oh, like. Oh man, I made it. Right. It's quickly replaced with, okay, I need to stay here. Right. Like, it's very apparent that they're trying to, as soon as you get there, they say it, it's an age old adage. As soon as you get there, they're trying to get you out of there. Yeah. You know, so it's not uncommon to walk in and, you know, they're trying out guys for your position. Yeah. It's like, dang, dude, I just got brought in here. And right. so the last four years, essentially, I've been thinking, oh man, like, they're going to cut me. Right. I remember I got drafted there fourth round. Obviously, looking back, it doesn't make sense. But I'm like in camp. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna get cut. I'm like, oh shoot, like <laughs> right. I messed this up. I'm I'm cut. I'm right. out of here. And that's not uncommon. And I think that now I understand why like Jerry Rice and like some of those older guys were saying you need to have a productive paranoia. I yeah. think for me it was just built in because like from the beginning I felt like I shouldn't be here. You right. know, I'm from Southern Utah, Foothill. You know, like, right, 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 yeah, yeah. like I was just like, man, I like this is crazy. I feel like I'm where I shouldn't be, and right. I've had to do, do, do the opposite, just kind of like establish that sense of I belong here, Yeah, um, which I've been doing through special teams. But, uh, yeah, that productive paranoia, you got to have it because guys get comfortable, man. Yeah. You don't want to be that guy. Was Megatron there when you were there? He wasn't. I just missed him by a year. Okay. I had just missed him by a year. And, yeah, he's, you know, you don't I, – I actually haven't even met him. I, was, I mean, just to – to see him on the practice field, that would have been, must have been. Oh, I you hear know. stories, man. Yeah, yeah, I hear stories. I, I have, I have had my share of guys that I've, you know, played with who have come through there, but yeah, not Megatron. I wasn't able to see him. When um, I watch like Hard Knocks, yeah, um, it's gut wrenching that that process for like the guys that do get cut or the older mm -hmm. guys that are getting pushed out or whatever, and like, man, it's nerve wracking, like it just is. to watch that stuff, you know? Yeah. I mean, you figure it's fifty-three man roster. You right. know it's going to be fifty-three guys. Right. Someone's going. Home. Someone's yeah. going home. And Someone's going on the practice squad. Yeah. So, yeah. And see, that's the thing is you can't even bank on the practice squad because it's like by the time like you have to focus on make. I have to make that fifty-three. And so for a guy like me, I'm like, okay, I need to do as much as possible. You know. And yeah. so guys who play special teams. I tell these kids now, I'm like, play special teams, trust me. Because if it comes down to linebacker A, linebacker B, one plays special teams, one doesn't, the one that doesn't is like, ah. They need the versatility. Right? Yeah, there's only 53 guys on the roster. Right. You know, so you, I mean, it's not like the old days when there were only 40. I was just talking to uh, a couple of the older guys uh, yesterday, actually, and um, they were talking about, yeah, back in the day, it was 43. It was, you wow. had to do everything. Right. But it's still kind of along those same lines. And so... Yeah, it gets that, gets crazy. You're you're obviously one of the big things in the news with the NFL right now is the CBA. Sure. Um, and one of the th and obviously you have an opinion on this, but one of the things that I have a lot of concern with is long term insurance and, and mm -hmm. health insurance because yeah. you guys don't have it's like five years after you end playing and that's it. Yeah, and right, and I can't really talk about like the specifics of it, but the idea is that. They, you know, most guys end up on a different insurance plan, you know, five to 10 years after the league, you know, you're working a different job. I mean, most guys, when they leave the NFL, you're in your thirties. So the idea and the hope is that guys get, um, insurance through whatever, you know, company they work for. Now, obviously when you're in the league, you can, you can file for workers comp. And so it's up to you to say, Hey, I've had this injury and write it down. And if you, as long as you do that, you're covered for it. If you need surgery or whatever, like you're covered for it. But right. a lot of guys don't think to do that. They don't think to, oh man, I had a little, I had a little, you know, whatever in this game, 
and it is documented. Teams do do a very good job. Most teams do do a very good job of documenting injuries. Sure. I mean, it's their liability, you know. And so guys don't think to write it down for and file it under workers' comp, which, you know, and I get to, it. But not to put you on the spot, but sure. Seven, but I'm going to do it anyway. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. yeah. seventeen like game it. season. Yeah, sure. Is it, you know, I mean, is feasible? Not feasible? Is it? Um, I don't think. I don't think there's necessarily, personally, I don't think there's an issue with 17 games um, if you compensate somewhere else, right? You know, let make it probably less uh, preseason games, you know, as long yeah. as the pay is justified. I think that's an issue with a lot of guys. Um, obviously, I'm not, you know, I, I can't say anything too specific because no, sure, it is ongoing. Sure, but, you know, there has to be some give and some take in any CBA, right? Right. From both sides, in order for either side to be happy. Yeah. Um, I understand that there is people want more football. You know, I understand that a longer postseason even would be ideal um, yeah. for oh, fans, that, right? I mean, that yeah, what, some you, of the postseason, you know, what he they were talking about, it's just yeah. Sure, but then you just have to understand that on the flip side of that, guys, like if you want a longer football season, which who doesn't want more football, All right? Um, Players have to be compensated. I need in the another off-season. week of fantasy football, man. Right? Really yeah, you need, you need, the fantasy I, I need football, that man. fantasy football. You know? <laughs> and Shit. you know what? I, shoot, I need a, I need a freaking hamburger and fries <laughs> on my couch <laughs> in the off season. You know? Yeah, but, no, uh, absolutely. But no, it's um. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, you know, talks are ongoing. Yeah, we were talking earlier about uh, Tony Romo and his contract with seventeen million dollars right. yeah. to to announce games, and these guys are out there in yourself, mm-hmm. you know, busting your balls and you know making, you know, not ends meet, but right. making so much right. less than sure. this guy. It's it's amazing to me. I mean, hey, you know, I'll never. Uh... I'll never say a guy shouldn't get as much as he can, you know, doing what yeah. he can do. So I'm happy. You know, I'm happy for all the guys. I think they were talking about possibly getting Peyton Manning uh, on yeah. another network, yeah. you know, yeah. for Monday Night Football. Yeah, the same contract. Yeah. And you know what, man? Shoot, go for it. That's exciting. I want to see more of that because then that means more guys, you know, will be inspired to say, you know what, I can make more money after the after right. the mm-hmm. NFL. Yeah. Like, that's inspiring. I want as many guys to go on and, and sign big deals, whether it be in broadcasting or whatever, because then that – that gives someone like myself and like the younger guys something to aspire to. Yeah, absolutely. you know, so you cool. seem like you would be good at this for sure. Oh, you, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's I was heard definitely I had a face for radio. Be... So I, <laughs> no, I appreciate no, no. It. when he's done years yeah. from now, if he wants to, he's definitely going to be wearing a suit and tie. Yeah. And he, he's got yeah. broadcasting. He's got a modeling career. Yeah, yeah. 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 You, guys are, you guys are flattering. What is this? What are yeah. we going on? <laughs> It's <laughs> pumping me up here. Yeah, yeah but we're just trying exciting. to get free tickets later, right? <laughs> yeah, Whatever yeah, team look. you land on, you know. Yeah. I know guys. Which I don't know if so you know the Raiders know. are coming here. Right. You know? <laughs> <laughs> what can we do? <laughs> yeah. No, that's that's good. Yeah, the Raiders, dude. Talk about that stadium, though. Man, oh, that stadium looks sweet. Yeah. Drove by it. Looks like the Death Star, man. Yeah. That thing is sweet. So oh, in the off season, is Vegas your home normally, or yeah? Okay. So my, uh, I, I, you know, my parents and my my little sister, she's getting married this year, so family's gonna get a little bigger by one. They're all stationed, you know, they're here, and uh, so I come back here and visit, you know, as much as I can. Try to get my traveling in, but yeah, when I'm not on the road, I'm I like to be here. And when you're not playing, uh, what do you do for fun? What's what's a day in the life of, for Miles? What's uh, a day fun look like? In the life? <laughs> <laughs> Hanging out with you guys. What do you mean? I like it. I no, like it. I, uh, you know, I. Are you a binge watching uh, Netflix and chill guy? Are you uh, you go hiking? What what's your what's your jam? I do enjoy I do enjoy a good hike. You know, yeah. Especially being out here, I miss the mountains, man. There's yeah. no mountains in Detroit, dude. Right, right. So I right. come out here and. You know, there's I not much in Detroit. There. Yeah, there's not. Yeah. 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 Hey, it's coming back. He can't agree to that. It's coming yeah. back. Yeah. There's barely even water. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. And don't drink the water. Yeah, don't oh, drink it. Man. Dude, you guys are all. Shit. Oh, look. Oh, but we, guys, we have yeah. like a, take the fifth mile. a Detroit don't. connection on the show today. You know. Yeah, we had Kendra Lust, uh, adult, okay. adult film uh, star hey. uh, on, uh, and she lives in Detroit. And then my buddy Roger lives in Mount Clemens. Okay. Uh, yeah, Mount yeah. Clemens. Yeah. Yeah. And he was telling me he's always bitching to me. He's like, we haven't seen. He does this countdown. He's like, I haven't seen the sun in forty three days. Yeah. Is it really like that sometimes? Sometimes. I mean, the weather. Winter. That's one thing you'll get. You'll get that winter yeah. in Detroit. But I mean, have you guys been out there recently? I haven't. I no. would. I would definitely recommend visiting. 
Mm. You, know, you know, it's really? not, it's not they on built it up. It's, it's not on the top of, of my right, right, right. right. Yeah, right. Look, I'm not going to oversell it. <laughs> right, right. I'm not going right. to pump you full of smoke, but I right. will say downtown is is starting to up. make a comeback. Well, yeah. that, you know, I think it's got, a very well kept secret right now. In, even sporting venues, I mean, you have mm-hmm. Little Caesar Arena now and Fort sure. Field and Comerica Park. So, yep. I mean, it's top notch. Yeah, it is nice. And the suburbs, you know, are always really nice i just if i did have one complaint i really like being out in the open i like being able to go out behind my house into the desert and build a bonfire and there's just no open land for me to do that in michigan you know it's yeah. like you're either on someone's property or you gotta file a you know some kind of clearance through a park or something and so that's what i like to do i'll go down in the dry lake bed build up a build up a huge uh, bonfire and sit around and you know, yeah. have some friends and that, that's what i like and what about other sports? Do you watch other sports uh, in the off season? Is baseball like um, watching paint dry? Uh, <laughs> UFC? Or I have boxing, been watching or... Golden Knights. And, yeah, uh, I did just watch the fight. You know, the boxing match. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Wilder and uh, that was crazy, yeah, huh? That was crazy. Holy man. shit! I was, I was nuts. Not what I was expecting. No, that wasn't what I was expecting. I had Wilder by knockout. I don't know what. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was up and down on Wilder. Yeah, I man. thought Fury. Well, you know the. Outfit and the costume, the forty pounds, right, you know, right. tired him out, and it was just, you know, crazy. they're gonna run it back though. They and, are. Oh, are they? Yeah, June, 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 and back at MGM, which surprised me. I thought they would bring that to go, the UK, go overseas. Yeah, yeah I thought but, they would bring that to London yeah. or somewhere. But yeah, wow, back crazy. to MGM. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay, that's good. That's good for so, Vegas. Weird question. Sure. What's your nationality? What's your sure? So my dad is my dad's African American. My mom is uh, Indiana Caucasian. Really? Okay. Just black and white. That's it, man. Yeah. Indiana black, Indiana white. And so, uh, my next question is, were you around during the Kaepernick period? Like sure. right at the yeah. end, maybe, <clears throat> right? Or excuse me. Right. right. 2017, so, I think. I want to say. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And I was yeah. drafted sixteen. And um so I was on a team where we we made a point to express our solidarity by linking arms before the game. Oh, and yeah. uh we you know that you know, we didn't have a, we didn't really have a huge kneeling movement, you know, mm-hmm. with the Lions, but uh, we showed solidarity, you know, as a team, as a city, by doing that, and we made a point to uh, fund a lot of local uh, things in the community to give back, you know, teach more awareness, so that uh, there was a stronger relationship between police and uh, civilians, especially in Detroit. Sure, yeah. in Detroit, because it was a you know it, it was a hot topic and it was an yeah. issue. And I think that with any issue, with any hot topic, you know, knowledge is power. And so, just getting people out there, understanding the issue, and just understanding, being more aware. That's what we did in Detroit. So, and how do you feel about <laughs> Cap? Like he stepped out and he became the, like the martyr of the whole cause, and it you know his comeback, his failed comeback. I mean, I think you because he's half black half white as well and like you guys have a unique perspective my brother is he has a white mom and so it's you guys have a different perspective because you kind (laughs) of can see both sides of it Mm -hmm. um how do you feel about cap and and all that well i um i can't speak too much on you know kaepernick and his where he's at his situation i only know my own situation and i i know i've been there you know it's you some people say you get the best of both worlds and you know growing up i was like too black for the white kids too white for the black kids so i kind of had the reverse <laughs> kind of had, had the reverse i didn't get the, the right. memo right. <laughs> but, get the memo uh, but you know and everyone grows up with trials you know everyone everyone is going to be looked at judged in a certain way whether you're short tall you know, overweight, it doesn't, like, everyone has some kind of inclination. That's just the human side of us sometimes. And I think that, uh, I think that the answer is is just for us to just kind of love each other, man. Like, it sounds cliche, yeah. but, you know, we all are fighting something. We all have something going on. And I think the world just needs a little bit more love. I don't know. I can't speak to Cap's career and what he's doing as far as, you know, whether or not he should be hired or shouldn't be hired. That's, you know, that's none of my business. But... Um, I will say that a lot can be healed just, you know, if we just get past the whole, you know, what makes us different and just kind of. Right. Miles, how old are you? 
I'm 26. How 26. on earth do you end up sounding this mature? He's at tw- like, when oh, I think man. of how Polished. I sounded at 26, it is a joke compared to what is going like, good <laughs> God. What about how you sound at 49? <laughs> yeah. Shit. You guys are great. Holy shit. Great. <laughs> what is going on here? You guys here? are great, man. There's something about Gris, I think, is it just, because, you know, Jake Ellenberger is a friend of ours. He's a UFC, well, he's a retired UFC okay. fighter. Yeah, yeah. And he's only 33 now. But same thing, you know, roll the clock. Or even a Conor McGregor who just turned 30 maybe oh, he's fun not to watch. too long ago. But there's a maturity, I think, that comes with being a pro athlete. You just grow up faster than the average guy. And mm-hmm. it's, maybe that's just because you're around men. You know, early, you know, you go in the NFL or even even the college athlete. It's a different, it's just, I think, a different maturity level. Well, okay. I will say this. I don't think I don't think a lot of people in the public accuse professional football players of being overly mature. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's one stereotype. Right? But um, I would say, honestly, growing up in Vegas – has helped me a lot. Really? You know, I I was exposed to stuff that, you know, people aren't exposed to until they're much older, right? Interesting. And they come here and visit. It's like Disneyland for them, you know, right. but I got to see it, you know, and I, right. I knew I wasn't trying to be, you know, doing certain things even in high school just because yep. I saw the other side of it, yep. right? I get to see the the darker side of maybe like gambling right. or everyone you know, at their worst. Everyone at their worst, yeah. man. Yeah. And so I've had that those were my friends growing up. And you know, I, I get to see kind of like the effects of that stuff. And so it kind of made me grow up a little faster in yeah. that element. And so I wasn't distracted necessarily through college. Not to mention I went to college in Utah. So right. even if I wanted to be distracted, I could He couldn't. did a tour duty in Utah. Yeah. Yeah. Salt Lake. In Salt Lake? Yeah. Okay. So how many well, Salt Lake's a good size, Seven. though. Yeah. yeah, it's decent. You liked it up there? Mm, I'm not an outdoorsy guy. I'm a yeah. city, but I'm from L.A. Sure. Originally, so, you know, so mm-hmm. yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't feeling it. Didn't like Salt Lake? No. Nah. Yeah. Very Mormon. Very, yes. Very, uh, very family Mormon. oriented, mm-hmm. you know, that kind of thing. Um, it's different. Have you been up there? Yeah. Yeah. Do yeah. You like it? You like it up there? Yeah, it's okay. I haven't spent crazy time in Salt Lake. Uh, we, again, when we had our PR firm, we used to do events at Sundance Film Festival mm-hmm. up in Park City uh, every year. Sure. Um, but that was a different. You Park City, Deer Valley the, is completely the, different. Completely yeah. different. Yeah. Yeah. Really, so different. It's yeah. just L.A. dropping yeah. everyone from L.A. Right. in yeah. the snow for right. a week. Yeah. Right. Uh, <laughs> and that's right. it, you know. Um, right. I think I only came to maybe Salt Lake one time while you were there, right? Because UFC why? Fight. Like, you know, UFC. Oh, right, right. Yeah. We went to UFC fight. Have yeah. you been to a UFC fight? Uh, I have. I have. I've been to, uh, yeah, I went to a UFC fight with my dad, actually, in uh, high school. Okay. Yeah, and it was fun, man. It's 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 a lot like hockey in the sense that it's a completely different thing when you go. Like oh, yeah. on yeah. TV is one thing, but like when you're there, it's great. It's yeah, I agree. yeah, it's great. I'm I love it, man. I I really liked watching California Kid. You know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when I was growing up, oh, yeah. dude, he was my man. Yeah, <laughs> he's still he was, fighting. Yeah, which is crazy. Came out of retirement. <laughs> yeah, we saw it was uh, the one in December we went to. Yeah, he was fighting. What's weird is I don't remember if he won or lost. He lost. He, he lost. He lost. Okay, he won the first fight out of retirement. Yeah, he smoked yeah. a guy. That's right. Yeah, he lost. And then, yeah. and then he yeah. lost. Right. So we, Julian Marquez, who was another UFC fighter, middleweight, come back uh we were talking about a little earlier about future and and financial stuff right in the nfl do they sit down with you and teach you you know life after nfl how to manage your finances do they go through all that sure so the nfl pa puts puts together like courses especially for rookies um and you can you can go in there at any time even if you're a veteran and they'll have clat like it's kind of like meetings and they'll go over all of that stuff all that financial literacy You know, they don't really go in like crazy detail. You're not going to leave there knowing how to pay your taxes, but you are going to be at least a little bit more familiar with like, hey, here's some statistics. Here's what I should be doing. I definitely should do my 401k, right? And maybe I shouldn't buy three cars and six houses, you know, and so stuff like that. So they definitely do do that. And it's up to the player whether or not they want to pursue more, because I would say that the NFLPA has has given us at least options to go and you know just kind of tap the minds of maybe guys who have been there before or professionals right. and again it's just one of those things that if you want it you can literally ask for it and someone can make it available to you yeah can you hang out for a minute dude i'm here What's uh up? so we're gonna call frank trigg who is a speaking of ufc he's a retired ufc hall of famer oh sweet uh, but we're gonna do a quick facetime call with him so yeah. if you throw your headphones on you'll be able to hear him uh he won't be able to see you, but he'll be able to see Yeah, but if you look at the monitor there, you'll be able to see him. Oh, sweet. Hey, 
haven't seen him since Cosmopolitan that Super Bowl. I haven't seen Trig in a minute, man. Maybe maybe we're not gonna see Trig. Oh, well, that was fun. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. We're just just kidding. Connecting. Here he comes. There he is. There he is. What What's up, what? Frank Trig? How are you doing? I'm good, man. I haven't seen you in a hot minute. I know. I actually saw you more when you lived in L.A. than, than now that you live in Vegas. I know. That's true, right? Uh, so with me is my co-host, Adam Lieberman, who you actually met at the Cosmopolitan at, during a Super Bowl party we went to in, years ago. In fact, Matt Stafford was there. Yeah, Matt Stafford was there. Oh, wow. Yeah, and Gronk was there. Yeah, it was a. And yeah. uh, unfortunately, hmm. because it's the iPad just focused on me, and it's too hard for me to move it around and show you people. I've also got Geo in the studio with me. What's G- up? Skinny Geo? Yes, Skinny <laughs> Geo. That's right. Yeah, and we He's also... actually. I'm trying to think. Uh, one of my friends. He actually trains one of my friends. Really? Who the hell is it? Tracy Lee. Yes, Tracy Lee. Oh, yeah. there you go. Well, there you go. Gee, there was there was a limit. To- yeah, right, right, right. yeah. It's his only client, so it was easy to come up with. You know, <laughs> you, he's only got two. Right. Yeah. 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 I just moved here. And then we Put also the have from the Detroit Lions, which uh, uh, Miles Killebrew is with us here today. Shut up. As well. Yes. So, how do, hold on. How the fuck you know him? Uh, well, I just met him. I just met him. Uh, he's actually dating uh, Vanessa's girlfriend. So, I, oh. yeah, I know. Because you know, I don't know any of the cool people on my own. So yeah, I know just, you know that. <laughs> Everything's from do Vanessa. I right. know. I know. Where are you right now? I'm at home. Marina Del Rey. Marina Del Rey. And he forgets, just, if he forgets his name, he can just turn around. Yeah. Yeah, like a plug. <laughs> I like so, that. Like, I'm in my office, which is, uh, hold on, can I fix this thing? Yeah. I mean, John, you'll be able to see it, but, uh, so this is my, my little office space that I have. Yeah. With my, I gotta keep my wigs on a, on a dummy, but this is my view <laughs> every day. Oh, nice. Wow. Yeah. And that's outside my door. For Clary, yeah. the wigs are because you do a lot of acting and stunt work, right? And so you need yeah. to throw those yeah. on from time to time. Cause, so what we found out is I do a lot of work on, uh, on NCSLA. Um, I've actually become, I wouldn't call him a friend, but we're definitely, we, uh, when I DM him, he responds and gets back to me with, with his madness that he has. And, and we, we definitely spend more time together on set. Yeah. We work, uh, uh, Todd Smith, LL Cool J. So every time I'm on there, they have a live chat. A lot of these shows do live chats during the show. You know, it's like a way for the, 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 the actors and actresses to get involved with the fans. Well. Every time I'm on there, literally somebody goes, oh, that's Trig's ear. That's Trig's ear. <laughs> oh, that's Trig's ear. Like, so I get blown up a lot, like a lot. And so it's called getting burned, um, where, where they know it's your face, they can't use it again. So um, I actually had a buddy of mine, uh, Steve Hart, who's the uh, stunt coordinator for Reno 911, since the show came back. And he's like, just get wigs, man. Just get wigs. I'm like, I'm not spending $600 on a wig that's not going to work. Literally, within one week, I had four different jobs. Really? <laughs> because I had yeah, yeah. Oh, so like, man. it's just impossible to hide me. It's just I just have a big head and I got uh, an ear that's all gnarled up that everybody recognizes, and it throws it throws producers off, it throws writers off. Well, my buddy Phil is a writer on NCSLA, and he's like, I, I want to write you into all these parts, but I can't because we use you three times already this season. Yeah, like, I got a wig. Use me now. I'm like, okay, now we can use you because you have a wig. So. <laughs> Trig, I got to tell you, you you tra- watching you transition from being a pro fighter to not just doing the stunt work and the acting work and then also being a referee like i know you busted your ass to do it and it it, it's really been cool to watch all the success that you've had come from all the hard work that you put in for you know life after your sport you know miles is only 26 uh here so he's got he's got some years uh left on the field but uh i I think it's inspirational you know when when he sees people like you that were able to transition um so pretty smoothly well, he, he's at, he's in the NFL, so he actually gets a, a decent salary, even if he sucks. <laughs> <laughs> if you're on the South team, you still get five hundred thousand a year. I mean, that's yeah. not that's not a crappy day, right? You know, you're you're fifth string, you're still getting paid. So the only advice I can give to any other professional athlete is you better figure out your exit strategy the first day you play. <laughs> yeah, you better know where you're going. Uh, and that my, I didn't know that. I had no idea what I was going to do. I got I got lucky. I fell into some stuff. Um, uh, uh, but 
usually if you, at the darkest time in your life, you find out who you really are as a human being. And that's what I did. I was like, okay, I want to, I was going through divorce. I'm going to figure out what I want to do next. What, how do I want to be productive for the sport and, and all that crap. And then got yelled at and got made fun of and, and got dumped and got fired and got pushed around and then found my own way. And all of a sudden this is, you know, flash forward eight years and here I am still, still struggling. <laughs> <laughs> How are you liking being a referee? So, love it. Absolutely, absolutely love it. I mean, it is it is ridiculous. I didn't think I was going to find something I would have a passion for as much as I did for fighting. I even had I had a bigger passion for fighting than I did actually for wrestling. So, it's a little weird. Or, excuse me, or for wrestling. So, it's a little weird for me that a sport that got me into fighting, I actually have more passion for fighting than I did for wrestling. Um, uh but when you when I made that transition into into refing, I was like, I'm not gonna like this as much. It's gonna be kind of difficult. It's a very long process to get to pro get to the pro level. It's it's there's a lot of work involved. And I was like, I can pull this off if I kind of pay attention. Uh, but you know, I'm just gonna kind of do it. At the same time, I jumped into stunts and I jumped into into refing. Like I said, this is where my life is gonna go. This is all I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna stop my acting classes and I'm just gonna focus on stunt and refing stuff. And man, I'm telling you what, my weeks were, were full back then. Um, it was an amazing ride. I had so much fun. I couldn't wait for the next day to get it and do some low budget straight to DVD movie and then <laughs> go rep some amateur fight at the end of the night. Like it was like that's all I love to do. It was awesome. I had a lot of fun doing it. You uh, a couple maybe a month or two ago, I saw something really cool. Um, especially since you know refs are getting so much grief for stopping fights early, uh, especially, especially lately, uh, at least in the UFC. Um, you stopped a fight. I can't remember the, the young guy's name, but he actually uh, thanked you. He sent you a, a message on Instagram, uh, yep. and he thanked you for for saving him from damage, uh, you know, and uh, and and stopping the fight when you did. And I thought that was a really cool thing. That was uh, Bellator, uh, December twentieth, I think, something like that. Um, yeah, Bellator, December twentieth. And we went to, uh, you guys hear that? Yeah, yeah, we hear you. you. Get that background noise? A little bit. It's not you, it's me. I can, yeah. I can see your lips moving, John, but I can't hear oh, you. Oh, really? Should I, uh, should we disconnect and I'll call you back? Uh, it just, it just seemed to clean up. It did. <laughs> just threatening. Maybe my finger right near the thing scared it. <laughs> Don't, stop touching stuff. I know. <laughs> right? <laughs> All right, so where, I'm sorry, where was I? Um, oh, yeah, Bellator, December, December, 20th. December 20th. And that, that happens all the time. Like, that kind of thing happens all the time. It's just never done on social media. It's never done uh, in a public forum like that. Usually, especially in Southern California, where I do most of my refing, you know, you'll ref Brian Ortega on, on Saturday, and then he'll be in the corner the following Saturday for one of, his, one of his teammates. So it's like you see these guys all the time. You see these trainers all the time. You see the coaches all the time. You know the managers because they're always out. You know, just because you know you got a Brian Ortega in the UFC doesn't mean the rest of the camp is in the UFC. The rest of them are in the in the other league. So we see these guys all the time. So they will. You get a coach who come and see a couple two three weeks later and be like, "Hey, man, thanks a lot for saving that one fighter," or 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 thank you for watching out for my fighter during that one fight. Or the fighter will come to you and be like, "Hey, man, I, I was mad at you that day, but I saw the I saw the the uh, tape later." So that goes a long way. But that was the first time that that actually happened in a real live form where somebody could be to repost it to see it, at least to me. I mean, it happens obviously to John and, and uh, Mike Belcher and the rest of those guys. So, Frank, what I is it with you and your stupid iPad? It actually, I swear, I got my finger that's closed so and it weird. went away. Yeah, that's weird. It's like I have the force. I'm using <laughs> no, the so fucking you, force right now, Trig. You got coronavirus. <laughs> right. Oh, oh, oh boy. Uh, Frank, I, you know, uh, we were talking earlier uh, with Julian Marquez, uh, UFC fighter, about Ooh. the referees and also the judges. Obviously, yourself being a former fighter coming in and, and being able to see know what these guys are going through, but these judges kind of have don't have an idea uh just your thoughts on that so it's the same thing that andy foster says um you know what john if he's popping up now you just call me back hang up call me back okay i'm gonna ask you that question all and right call me back. i'm not gonna argue with frank trig like no, i he'll, wouldn't no. he'll be on a plane out here and beat the shit out of me <laughs> i'm not doing it all right let's see what happens better? much better okay much better so the the Andy Foster, the executive officer from the state of California, 
did a big thing on Ariel, Ariel Hawani's show talking about the judges. There is nothing wrong with the judges. Criteria. Understand me. There's nothing wrong with the judging criteria. It's how it's being applied by different judges. Like Andy said, we know who the best judges are. We know the Derek Cleary, the Sal Diamato, the Mike Bells. We know that these are the best, the best guys out there for judges. Why would you not call that guy and ask if he's available to come work that event? If you know he's a guy that's been, that's been doing this for a long time. What happens a lot is these local jurisdictions, where the UFC travels everywhere, Bellator travels everywhere, so you have to use, you know, you're in Nebraska, or you're in Texas, or someplace that doesn't get a lot of fights, you've all of a sudden got to be able to use different fighters. you got to be able to understand, or shoot, different judges. You have to understand, like, these judges combined, the three of them combined, might have 200 championship fights. And they only got 125 of those fights right. Wow. But the Clarys, the Diamatos, the Bells, these guys have had 400 championship fights each and have gotten 395 of them correct. Who do you want to right. come judge? Who do you want to come do this? For sure. So that's part one. Part one is getting the, the best judges, the best referees to make sure there's nothing wrong. And the UFC and Bellator do a great job of doing that. They traditionally bring in judges and refs specifically. But the local commissioner wants to take care of his guy. You know, I don't know what Texas numbers are, but Texas may have 25 MMA fights a year. And they want to take care of their local guys. They'll put their local guys on the big events when John Jones is fighting because they want to take care of these guys because they're loyal to them, which is great. I get it. But it doesn't necessarily work if you're trying to have your, your state get more fights to come in. Because remember, the, the, the commissions are money makers for the state. So the UFC pays a fee. The UFC pays money to come into the state to throw an event. And then that money gets, goes towards the refs, the judges, all the billing, all that kind of stuff. But it also is a profit for the state. If the commissions aren't profitable, they do like Tennessee, and they shut them down, and there's no more commission. So you've got to do it in such a fashion that when you go to whatever jurisdiction, you're like, I want to go back because they brought in the best guy. They had the best guy refereeing, the best judges. I had two of the judges, two of them were the best judges, and one was my local guy. My local guy did the same thing. He voted the same way, so now we're on the same page. So that's one thing. Right. The other thing is, I could be wrong, and I can only speak to California, so I'll take California out of the mix, the other 49 states. I think only 85% of the, I think only 15% of the judges actually train in some fashion of the sport that's not boxing. Yeah, that's crazy. They don't train in it. So if you don't train in it, you don't understand right. what you're looking at. Right. You don't know that, that that wrestling takedown double leg right into a guy's guard means nothing. You think because it's a great double leg, it was a big slam, it means something. It means nothing. It absolutely means nothing. You cannot win. You cannot win a fight at the end of the round. By doing by taking by taking somebody down, which is what we'll get into. We talk about Romero and, and that Romero can't shoot a takedown at the end of the first, end of the second, end of the third, and think, and think he's winning three rounds or none if he didn't do some damage beforehand. So this is this, the game has changed. The judging in a lot of jurisdictions has not changed. Yeah, it is getting better. They are doing a big push. And and thank so much for for California Andy Foss, who basically runs runs the gamut and and kind of controls how people are looking at MMA and looking at at, uh, at the judging and refereeing. But then New York. It's done an incredible job making sure you get things fixed and get things correct. And they're a new commission. They haven't been around forever. They're, they're basically a new commission. And then a lot of these other commissioners are starting to step up and make their games. And you really got to respect a place like Hawaii. They have more than enough refs and more than enough judges. But every time Bellator comes, they go, they ask Bellator, who do you want to be flown in for these events? Because we know you're going to have two title fights. We know that you want to have the best judges, the best refs on it. Who are your guys you want to bring in? They bring them in. Right. I mean, so it's 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 a big deal. Like these jurisdictions are like, you know what? Our ego is getting out of the way. Let's it, yes, it costs us a little bit more. We make a little bit less money for the state, but we got Bellator coming back now every year for two, yeah. for two fights. Hey, every year it's coming back to Hawaii. Frank, you I know? have a question for you, Miles Gilbert here. I uh, so in the NFL, the I'm, Ra- I'm sorry, I'm a I'm a Rams fan. I can't. No, I can't. Fine, fine. <laughs> no it's fine. I get it. I uh, I had a question for you. So. In the NFL, when the refs are reviewed, um, there's review processes in place for them. So if they make a call or if they don't make a call, you know, it's reviewed. Now that you're on the other side, is there a similar system in place for referees and judges? Are they reviewed by, by peers or by maybe a commission or something? So, like I said, I can basically only speak for California. Mm-hmm. We have a pre-fight meeting with the lead inspector and or executive officer, if he is there, depending on the show. Um, Because, you know, if you have, like, Tyson Fury and Dante Wilder fighting the same night as the UFC and and, and that fight's in L.A. and the UFC's in Sacramento, where do you think the executive officer is going to go? You know, he's going down with boxing because that's what you have to control. So 
the lead inspector, the executive officer, all the judges, all the referees. We have a pre-fight meeting. Then we have the fight. Then the fights are over. We go back. We have a post-fight meeting. And don't let you be the guy that screwed up, which has happened to me a couple of times. If you're the one that gets screwed up, you know for sure they are talking about you when we get to that post-fight meeting. And you will get sat down. Mm -hmm. They will sit you down and tell you, like, we're going to, you know, you're going to ref or judge, but it's not going to be Bellator or UFC for a while. It's going to be some of the minor leagues. It's going to be, they need to go back and do 10 amateur events. They need to go back and do five amateur events. Fix these things. So there is a checks and balance. And Andy Foster will sit you down. A lot of these other jurisdictions can't do that. They don't have enough guys. If you sit down one of your judges, all of a sudden you can't throw in, you can't have an event. I mean, wow. so it's, it's, right. a, it's a bit of an issue. But yeah, we we go through. And I was raised with John McCarthy as my mentor in refing. Mm-hmm. And believe me, he's now the commentator for Bellator. When I mess up on a Bellator thing, I I he's at the sound he's at the booth talking about the next walk in. And he's telling me he's going to talk to me here as soon as this fight's over. Like, wow. he's already yelling at me. Right. From the commentating booth, you get out, you're like, okay, I get dressed down and figure what I did wrong. You know, and that's and that's how all of us are done. Yeah. Beltran, Herzog, Dean, uh, Bell, Trigg, uh, uh, Beer, all of us in California all have to answer to everybody else within our peer group. We're in a big text chain that when something else happens in another jurisdiction that none of us are working, um, that, that weird stoppage last weekend with uh, Kevin McDonald. Yep. Uh, uh, the guy was on his feet. He looked like he was out, but he never stumbled. He never really fell down. He's looking. He was kind of punch drunk, whatever. Kevin steps in and stops it. We immediately start talking about it within our group, within our private chat. We immediately start talking about. It. All of us were watching it. All of us popped on. Okay, what do you do in this situation? What would you do in this situation? How do you handle it? What is the protocol? What's legal? What's illegal? What is what is the right thing? What goes towards optics? Because the big thing now is optics. Does it look right? Okay, I understand Kevin stoppage. Kevin. And, and uh, we have a chat group on, on Facebook that he jumped into. I understand his stoppage and what he was looking at, but optically, it's a weird stoppage. Why right. is that a weird stoppage? Because the guy never stumbled. For the layman, for the, for the, for the 50% of the fans that don't really know, and this is the problem, Miles, that we have. We have that we're not like football. Right. Right? With football, people kind of know what's going on. So when the, when the, when the Saints get screwed by the, by the judges and the, and the line judge, mm-hmm. they know. Like, the fans know. They got... With MMA, we don't necessarily know what we're looking at. So the fans don't necessarily know what's wrong or what's right. That stoppage to everybody looked a little suspect. So you're not really sure. So See, what you want to have happen is he gets hit and he falls down and hits his butt, and he's stepping to stop it right away. And he, if he's faking, so what? He's a great actor. That, that's on you. You fake yeah. me. We tell you, we tell you backstage. If you're trying to fake an injury or fake like you're tapping or fake like you're out, you're going to fool me. I'm not that smart. Fight's over. Huh. So don't do it. It's just very simple. Like, right. uh, uh, <clears throat> Chael Sonnen tried to do it against Tito Ortiz. He tried to fake like he was getting choked. Hoping that Tito would let go and the ref waves it off. And he's oh, like, what the hell? Oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> you faked me out. You're a better actor than I am. Trig, I know you only got a couple more minutes. Uh, so I-, I want you to leave us with this. Years ago, uh, you told me TJ Dillashaw was going to beat Burrell. And I believe TJ was a 4 to 1 underdog. And I did very well as a result of it. I am on the fence on the main event between Adesanya and Romero. I'm going to bet on whoever you tell me to. Oh, you're going to go broke. So here's, uh, <laughs> Romero does not use his wrestling anymore. I looked up his I looked up his, his bits a little bit a little bit ago, his stats. He only has a 31% takedown ratio in his fights. 31%. To be honest with you, I think Kenny Florian has the same. Hmm. Right? These are not guys that are going to take anybody down. So so Romero doesn't use his wrestling anymore. And the reason why is because he gets exhausted. Wrestling right. is exhausting. Right, so if you look at the um, uh, the uh, Whitaker, the Whitaker and the and the Israel fight, Whitaker would charge. Israel would take a, would take a half step back, and 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 Whitaker's punching it. And something that's not there. There's just nothing there. He's gone. He goes to them. Then at the end, well, not not all the way to the end. Go back about thirty seconds. Israel stops backing up and holds position, but just enough so he's outside. He doesn't get hit, and he hits him and drops him. And he bounces back up, and the fight continues for a couple more seconds. He does it again, but he takes one. As he's knocking Robert down. So he knows he can make contact. So he steps in. He stays in the pocket. He throws one. He takes one. But he landed first. And they hit him with the second one. And then the fight's over. So Israel's going to do the same thing. He's going to back up, back out. Problem is Romero, if you take one, you're going to sleep. No matter if it's first round, fifth round. doesn't matter. He might be exhausted. He's still going to hit you like a truck. If Romero's usual game plan is survive, survive, big, you know, drop, drop his right hand, hits with the left, drop his right hand, hits with the left. If it lands, he'll do a lot of damage. Somebody stays away from it. And last 30 seconds or so of the round, 
he'll shoot, take you down, get on top, hold it on to you for 30 seconds, and believe he won the round. That doesn't work anymore, right? And hopefully somebody explained that to him. That does that does not work anymore. He's got to do damage or take down pass and start throwing some elbows to make the judges at least believe that he won that round. Romero has got to win the first three rounds decisively. There cannot be any question. There not, cannot be like a round three with, with Jones and, and, forgive me, I forget the other Reyes. guy's name, that, that round three maybe could have went either way. How did you see it? Was round one a 10-8? Was round one a 10-9? Like, what the hell happened? You know, you don't want to have any of those decisions. Right. Because then you get to the end, you're like, oh, you got screwed. Right? You got, and I, I believe Reyes won that fight against John Jones. Um, but I also, just caveat, so don't start emailing me and yelling at me. I was drinking and talking at my house. <laughs> <laughs> don't hold me to that. Okay? And there, so with this Israel fight, Israel's going to win four and five for sure. He just has better shape, longer range, knows how to, how to conserve himself. Romero's got to win one, two, three to be able to win the fight. Decisively. He's got to get a knockdown at some point to back off Israel. If he doesn't knock him down, Israel's just going to hang out in the pocket. Israel will not attack you first round and a half. He's going to make you chase him, which is going to make Romero extremely tired. Who's going to win this fight? It all depends on how Romero shows up. If Romero shows up with enough energy and a better game plan he's been using, he can win this fight pretty easily, but we're going to be really nervous come round four and five because he's going to be in a position where a lot of times we're like, you might get, he's about to get starched, he's about to get starched, then he gets a hold and ties him up, takes him down, and then it, it changes, changes course. Or he gets hit three times in a row and goes to sleep. Because he is big and he is strong and his head does not turn. And, and, the, and the, to make you get knocked out, you have to snap your neck and make that brain bounce off the inside of your skull. It's very hard to do with Romero, but Israel can do it. That's the problem. Israel can not only fake, I'm throwing a big left hand and it hits you with a left leg kick, shin straight to the temple, but then he immediately follows up with two hooks. And you, and you, haven't, even, you haven't even finished analyzing, you just got kicked in the head. And you're already getting punched again. You're like, what? Well, and that's going to put a guy out. I don't care who you are, that's going to put you to sleep. Okay, Trey, I'm putting the farm on Israel, and if he loses, I'm telling my dad you told me to do it. Why are you always going to involve your dad in arguing? <laughs> why, why is he always against you? John knows I'm, I'm really scared of his dad. His dad's like power over me to be like, I told you to sit down. I'm like, yes, sir, I'm sitting. I'm sitting straight. What do I put? Okay, drinks down. What do I do now? What do I do now? Trey, we miss you, man. Let's, let's hang out when you're in Vegas again. Uh, a couple weeks. All I'm right. on uh, SEAL team next week up in Big Bear the whole week, and then I think the week after I'm coming in. So, cool, man. Right, Joe. All right, thank you for doing this. You got it. All Thanks, right. guys. We'll see you. See yeah. yeah, man. That's Frank Trigg. That's UFC Fall Hall of Famer because that's what we bring to the table here. Okay? Future Hall of Famers, current Hall of Famers. Nice. That's cool, man. Yeah. Nice. Cool yeah. dude. That's cool. Yeah. I mean, you're uh, you're asking big style questions there. Uh I feel I've, like I've always been curious about that though, because I always hear guys who know more about UFC and fighting than I do, and they're always like, "Man, that was a bad call, or that right. was stopped too early, or that was stopped too too late." And I was I was always curious about the accountability side of that, you know, like what goes into a bad call, what happens if back to the fight. I was always curious about that, so that was, that was some good insight. His maturity is ridiculous. Think of, I was just thinking, like, I, I hate to dwell on it, it's like, oh I God. think of Let's how I sand, sounded at 26, Let's I did see. not sound Maybe like this. Maybe you should I, switch. I need, I, think so. I need to show my girlfriend this show that you guys <laughs> calling me mature. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> There's proof. There's proof. <laughs> that's too funny. Oh, that's good. Oh, man. I do I have, have one question for you. Yeah, before bring it. This jug right here filled with this uh, yellow. It's not urine. Okay. 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 No. Uh, so that was brought in by a guest earlier named Brad Feinberg. The He's, multivitamin drink. Yeah, it's a multivitamin, multivitamin drink. Multivitamin drink. Yeah, Brad is the trainer for Dan Reynolds, uh, okay. lead singer of Magic oh, Dragons. Yeah. Oh, I met him. He's a good guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And so he brought in a bunch of the new products that they have for a company called AI Wellness. And, oh, okay. uh, oh. and we did a taste test, and it was actually good. It you smells like it? smells very vitamin y, which scared the shit out of me because that's not how I roll. Uh, but it was it it actually tasted good, yeah. Hey, anything Dan does, man, I believe it. I believe yeah. it's good for you. And Brad does also uh, his security when they're on the road. He does a lot of different things. Yeah, sure, good guy. Yeah, I had to send Gio a picture of uh, Miles tackling uh, Raider. Dude, oh yeah, yeah, tackling. Yeah, right. Doesn't look like I tackled him. 
Did you not tackle him? I'm pretty sure that was, was that not a, miss? a tackle. But see, here's the thing. Did he put you on a poster? <laughs> if you look me up, like the very first thing you're going to see, I'd rather you look at that than the face mask. I felt terrible about that face mask on Miles Sanders. I don't know if you remember that. No. They call it like the most egregious non call in the Lions recent aren't history. on TV out here. Uh, <laughs> no, I believe. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. <laughs> well, you, you know, it's funny you say that because I what? moved from Hawaii, yeah. uh, Maui, about two or three months ago. And we, the only games we had were Tennessee Titan games because of Mariota. Oh, That's wow. the only game we had every freaking week, no matter if it was Tennessee Cleveland a couple of years ago. That's what we had. It was horrible. Wow. Yeah. It was ridiculous. Yeah, buddy. That's uh, Titans. Titans did good this year, though. This year, yeah. Yeah, my buddy is on that on that team, Lashawn Sims. He was my roommate in college, and uh, yeah, they had some some success, man. I was I was proud of them. It will. Do you guys like? I picture like all of you guys like after like it's like is it like little league like every the team everyone from the team goes like out to eat and shit after the game. It's not like that, is it? Everyone goes their separate. They get orange slices too and right. like right. Suns. What's yeah, going on? Yeah. The bananas <laughs> go shake hands after the game. No, we, uh, it's it wasn't like that necessarily in Detroit. You know, you got guys different age groups, different levels right. in their career going home. They just want to see their family. You know. Um, I know me after a game, I'll just go home. I had a roommate, and he was on my t- he was on the team too, Steve Longa, yeah. and we would just go home and play some cards or something. Like it's it's really not, at least where we were, it's not like it's, it's not crazy, what we right? No. I mean, because you have less than you have less than six days before right. your it's next like, game. Getting ready for the next. Yeah, like, you, so need, you, just you need the chill. time off. Yeah, yeah man, I get play that. some video games, you know. And you just rent housing for the season, and that's it. I did. That was my choice, just because I was, you know, I was a single guy coming into Detroit. You know, I didn't have, I didn't have the wife and kids situation, so I didn't have to, you know, spend too much for that. Um, so I just rented. I didn't, like I said, I thought I was going to get cut every year, so <laughs> may as well just do a year lease and just see what, what happens. happens. And on that same highway, do you really watch the money um, if you're thinking, like, I'm getting cut every year? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, I did, at least. Yeah. You know, I was always I feel like that's frugal. rare, too. Well, Most I, guys probably just go, well, like you said, never buy be, three cars sure. and do all this, well, you know, I, the I jewelry. Wasn't one of those guys. I didn't go to one of the huge, you know, like, SEC schools, so I didn't honestly, like... I don't want this to sound like a knock on my confidence, but I didn't, I didn't plan to go to the NFL, right? So I right. wasn't like, hey... I can't wait to just go do all this crazy stuff. I was an engineering major. I was getting ready to do, you know, be in a certain amount of debt and then work my way out of it, you know, doing the engineering thing. Right. So I still only live off of like maybe 50000 a year. Right? Really? And, oh, yeah, because I figured that's probably where I was going to be. And so each year I would add a little bit. I would pay myself a little bit more each year. But... You and know, that, I'm still pretty that busy. electric blue Lamborghini downstairs. <laughs> right. Yeah, you you just got that. I double parked. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, dude, I've had the same pickup for four years. Bro. Really, the same pickup, same GMC Sierra. It's been it's been treat me well. And um, hey, you know what? I signed this next contract. Maybe you know. Get and something so else. you said you didn't think you were going to the NFL. Did were you right. surprised when you got drafted then, or was it inevitable that you were going to get drafted? By then I had an inkling that I had a really good shot. You know, my senior year, I put up some good numbers. I we had talked to teams, which was unheard of at SUU to even have teams come to our games. We're like, what the heck? There's scouts right. here from the NFL. This is weird. Um, I had already gone to the Senior Bowl in the Combine, and so that's a pretty good, you know, yeah, sure. indication that they are interested. And right. so, but I still didn't. I still didn't know for sure. You know, you can tell someone until you're blue in the face that you're going to the NFL, but coming from where I came from, I wouldn't believe you. And so I was I was surprised and I was relieved and I was thankful and I was grateful and I've been trying to work my butt off ever since. And especially with that super slow 40 time you were right. pro, you were oh pro, my gosh, you know, dude. Uh, <laughs> so, man, that, I have nightmares about it. I'm like, dude, he like, brought I that don't. back. That's, That's me. That was me. Yeah. Oh, yeah, but don't, you know, well, cuz he seems so room. nice. I feel like I could get away with that. Oh, one, dude. You know? And yeah. you know what else is is and not to blow smoke up your ass, but how humble you are. Yeah. You know, because I've met other professional athletes and just, you know, the cockiness sure. of it and how humble you are. And, and I think appreciative of what oh, yeah. you what have, you have to where be. you've been. It can literally be taken away from you at any moment, man. Even if you're one of the greatest players, you know, you can you can succumb to injury. So. See, I think that 
everything we see about and like about this guy is his parents. Yeah. It, you know he's got some good stock. Yeah. And that's what this is more than anything. Appreciate that, man. I'm the, sure to tell him. The, <laughs> the, the classic thing. Tell, was, tell the, the parents, tell the girlfriend. Yeah. You know, yeah. We need to get everyone on board. Yeah. The, sh the schmo just walked in and the cl I wish we had, I don't know if Matt even captured the look on Miles' face just now. I knew the schmo walked in the room because oh, I was guy. looking at Miles and he, he had that look like who the fuck is that guy? <laughs> <laughs> no, man. Hey, yeah. Go say what's up. Yeah. Uh, man, well, thank you so much for doing this today. Oh, of course. You know, Thanks for um, me. And I realized you called me, didn't you? I, I, I had, when you first got here, that was yeah. you. I was like, who's calling? Is the 702 number? That was yep, you? That was I was me. like, who's calling? I was like, this is probably, I don't know, well, who is this? Who is this guy? Yeah, but uh, the fact that you, uh, you know, showed up without even the recon for base or anything, thank oh, you no, so much I for doing that. It. it was really good to meet thank you, man. You. Hey, pleasure. Yeah, right. I'll get thank out of here. you so, so much. Keep it moving.